Hey guys and welcome back to Gumpla Building for Cheap. This is a series where we're basically showing you guys how to uh, basically set a budget of $100 and be able to get all the kit and supplies, everything you need to make a nice fully painted kit. And yeah, I'm doing this project again in uh, collaboration with Justinius Builds. The project was his idea. So thanks to him for uh, approaching me with this idea. I think it's a really cool idea. I hope it's helpful for you guys. And uh, if you're watching my series and not watching his, then please go and watch his as well. Uh, because then you'll be able to see kind of different takes on the project. We set a budget of $100 to buy the kit and everything we need. So I bought the first grade Gundam Curios, which was very cheap. So I was able to spend more money on other supplies and stuff. Let's see if uh, those supplies came in handy. Uh, some people made mention that I bought a lot of like name brand supplies, like Tamiya supplies and stuff like that, that are going to be more expensive than other options, like just stuff from like a DIY hardware store or something like that, Home Depot, something like that. Uh, the, the couple reasons for that is that number one, uh, we don't really have kind of DIY hardware stores here in Korea. There are, but they're more like for if you want to replace the like handles on your cabinets you have like a few options for that and then there's like other stuff like for actual like companies that are like building houses and businesses and things like that they're not really for like people doing just like private at home projects we don't really have a whole lot of stuff like that so just that sort of things like just cheap sandpaper or like cheap uh, like paint thinner, stuff like that is a little bit more difficult to come by. Of course there is on internet shopping, you can do all that as well, but the other reason that I can get like Tamiya products and stuff like that for cheap here, so I mean I could have saved maybe uh, a few extra dollars by getting some like non-name brand stuff, but like I don't know, Tamiya is just what I'm used to and like if I can get it for cheap then might as well just get that was kind of my thinking about that. So I don't know, some people brought up some really good points that it would have been good to show uh, just some more, like even more cheaper options. Uh, so I kind of regret not doing that. So I hope you guys uh, will understand, I guess, my reasons for doing it the way that I did. Uh, in retrospect, maybe it was not totally planned out uh, as well as it could have been. Uh, so sorry about that. But anyway, I hope this series is still helpful and interesting for you guys nonetheless. Um, I hope it will be. Anyway, this video is going to be pretty long, I think, just because I want to go over quite a few of the uh, stages in the painting. So I don't want to ramble on about that too much, but just wanted to uh, pay some note to that. Anyway, so uh, I've got uh, a lot of the parts here ready to be primed. Uh, there's still four more. I've taken out a bunch of the poly caps because I'm not going to be priming those. So just take those out and set those to the side. I uh, have the arms and parts of the chest here as well that are going to have to wait their turn to be primed. I'm going to go ahead and spray primer on all of these. One thing also that I forgot to mention in the build video is that uh, the way that the head is made is that the face piece is one piece and then like the sides of the heads are two other pieces. So there's a seam on the top of the head. Now in order to get rid of that seam I would have to glue that and basically just be locking the face piece into there. There would be some mods and things that we could make to sort of slip the face piece up inside there. Uh, but I didn't really want to risk that. I thought what might be the better option would be just to paint the face, then mask the face, uh, then get rid of the seam line, then uh, paint the head separately so that I, I have the... Uh, the face is nicely painted and then once I paint the rest of the head then just remove the mask. Oh shoot, but I don't have masking tape. I didn't include that in my budget. <laughs> Uh-oh. I guess that's one thing that I should have included in the budget. I think I was I was under budget, like uh, something like $10 or something like that. So I'm going to use that now to get this masking tape here. Luckily, I had this uh, right on hand, so uh, we'll add this to my budget. I have to check the price. I don't remember offhand, but it couldn't have been more than $10 for this. So uh, we'll just go ahead and add that to my budget just to make my masking a little bit easier. I think I'll, there's maybe a couple areas where I might want to use this, so another uh, mistake on my behalf. Uh, so sorry about that guys, but we're going to add some masking tape to this. Again, you could get different other kinds of tape uh, that's not Tamiya and not uh, cheaper and just something else that's going to work just as fine, but in this case I just have that on hand and it was not very expensive for me to just get that here, so I'm going to use a little bit of that masking tape. Let me 
reattach this. So yeah, so for the head, uh, I'm gonna just I'm gonna prime the whole thing now, but then I will go ahead and just like paint the face. I'll I'll prime it, then take it apart and paint the face, and then put it back together with the face uh, masked off. So just letting you guys know that's my plan for that. So I'm gonna go ahead and prime these parts. Then uh, when they're dry, I'll load up the last four and then prime those, and then we'll come back and take a little, another look there. See how I did on some of those seams. Right, so here we are, all primed, mobile suit, and then I've got the beam rifle and shield here as well. And uh, all the seams came out pretty good. Uh, there's a couple of little rough areas that I might try to clean up a little bit more, uh, but for the most part, everything came out uh, well enough, I think, for what we want to do with this project. It's definitely tightened up quite a bit. Uh, I didn't do a whole lot of masking in terms of like masking uh, some of the joints that are gonna be gonna be tightened up by uh, the primer and paint. So when I go to paint, I might use a bit more of the masking tape just to cover those joints so they don't get any tighter than they already are now. Namely, like the hip joints, the legs are really really stiff on there now. Uh, but here you can see on the front uh, that the seam line's pretty nicely gone there. Here on this one, there's some pen marks on there, so that's what that is when I touch it with my pen. The pen, sh uh, you're able to see the pen through the primer. Uh, but the uh, kind of fixing that I did just by kind of scratching that out, like I've talked about before, uh, it looks okay. I think it'll be fine uh, for that. All the other seams look pretty good. Uh, the ones on the top of the thighs look good. On the back as well, there's a little bit of a mark here on the back of this one, I think, up inside of there, but you can't really see it at all, so that's okay. Backpack looks okay, and yeah, everything's looking good. So I think at this point, what I want to do first is paint the face, uh, so that I can do, like I said, mask the face and then uh, finish that seam on the top of the head. That should be a really quick fix. Uh, and yeah, otherwise I can just start painting, so I'm gonna start just doing some of the basic painting, uh, work on the face a little bit, and then I'll come back and give you another update, so just a minute. Okay, so the painting is all just about done. I'm gonna do maybe a little bit of touching up before I spray on the top coat, but just to give you a little bit of a look here at what I've done, basically just use the orange uh, for the eyes and the camera, and then the camera on the rifle as well here uh, and then just used uh, okay so I ended up using the white uh, paint only a tiny bit basically under the orange on the eyes the camera and the camera here just to make the orange brighter I just use a little bit of white first wait for that to dry then paint on the orange use that did not end up using the black at all I just only used uh, the accent accent uh, kind of line wash so we'll uh, take that from our total the purple obviously I used for uh, like the GN areas these circles here on the arms on the head the chin piece the chest piece here on the legs and I think that's it here I'll give you just a look at the back here uh, so used a little bit of purple a little bit of orange uh, I did not end up using this light gray, this sky gray, so we'll take that out as well. Uh, used quite a bit of this, obviously the German gray, so a lot of these uh, darker gray details. Uh, the V-fins, those fins, uh, this dark gray inside here, on the joints there. Uh, let's see, those parts there. The hands are all painted just in that dark gray, the back of the arms, back of the legs. Uh, some of these details here on the backpack and there, this fin on the back of the head, oh there's the camera there on the back of the head is in orange as well. And then like these parts, these darker parts are just filled in with that uh, darker gray. So I don't know, I was thinking I wanted to use, and here's just a look at the shield again as well, it's basically just uh, those parts are filled in with the dark gray and then the rest of the lining is just with the accent color. So. It's really, really simple color scheme. Uh, I wanted to, I originally intended to use more of that orange and like more uh, kind of color variations, but uh, just it's hard to paint large areas with this enamel, so I wanted to keep it to pretty minimal areas. Uh, there's a little bit of purple up inside there as well, you can see. 
Um, so yeah, so that's pretty much it. Uh, I wanted to keep it pretty simple, I guess. I decided not to use too many colors. Uh, I originally painted the V fin and those like uh, shoulder neck fins in the orange color, but it was too bright, I thought. Here, I'll post a... There's the picture of that. It, as you can see, I don't really think it looks good if you compare it to this. I think it looks much better now. Um, <clears throat> the orange paint was too thick as well. Uh, it was too too bright and too thick. It just didn't look good. Also for the face piece, uh, what I originally set out to do worked very well. Was to just paint the face, mask that, then uh, put the head together and get rid of the seam on the top of the head. Let's see if you can see. Anyway, well. There's nothing to see. The seam is gone there. So sanded, like glued, sanded that, got rid of that, then painted the whole head, and then took off the uh, masking tape. Here's a quick video of that. Anyway, I posted that to my Facebook. If you, uh, if you uh, follow my page there, you would have already seen it. Uh, so, then just going back to the gun momentarily, uh, then just painted this part in here in that darker gray. The barrel was, uh, there's no hole in the barrel, but I wanted it to be at least a little bit darker. But since I got rid of the black paint, it would have been good to just put a drop of black paint on the end of there. Uh, but I decided just not to use any black at all. So just put a drop of the German gray on there, on the end, so it's at least darker anyway to sort of simulate a hole. Ideally, if I had a drill, I mean, maybe it would have been a good idea to factor a pin vise into there, uh, but this would really be the only time that I really would have used it on this kit. Uh, at this time would be just using the pin vise to drill actual holes in there, but otherwise that's pretty much it. Like I said, I might need to go up and touch up a couple of the areas a little bit, but otherwise it's done and I'm gonna go ahead and spray the top coat and then, yeah, so the fourth video. So, I like I said, I'm going to be giving this kit away. I just hadn't really, uh, before I hadn't decided how I wanted to do it yet, but now I decided I think I just want to keep it pretty simple and just give it away to just a commenter. So, how you can win this kit is to uh, just comment on the, not this video, the next video, the last part. On part four, when I post that, it'll be about uh, five to seven days after posting this video. Uh, when I post the final uh, part of this video, uh, leave a comment on there to enter to win this kit, and then uh, shortly after that, I'll do a drawing to see who the winner is, and I'll send it to you. So anyway, that's it for this part of the video, the painting. Sorry I didn't show you guys a lot of the actual painting, but it was, I mean, if you want to see more about like how I actually go about that, I pretty, just, pretty much just followed the same steps that I used in my uh, build of the Yakadoga, which I did the whole uh, painting and building uh, video series on so you can go check that out if you want otherwise I mean it's just spraying and then just painting these with a, a small brush so that's pretty much it pretty simple uh, I didn't do I didn't get any decals because I didn't want to add that to the cost so if I did it would have been nice to maybe just add a couple decals here and there but I kind of like it just how it is it has a kind of a very like stealth kind of look to it I think someone pointed that out on Facebook that it's kind of very stealthy looking. I don't like to say, like it almost looks like something like if someone else was building it they would call it like a dark curios or something like that. I'd, I hate naming kits like that so I'm not going to but it would kind of fit uh, that name uh, for someone who might like to name it that. If you win the kit you can change the name to whatever the heck you want to. I don't really care but uh, so I am think I'm just gonna say that it's just kind of a stealth version. Let's just kind of go with that. Maybe it should have a little bit more black on it, or a lot more black probably, but uh, I mean, just as it is, it should be good. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions, comments, leave those below. Otherwise, we'll see you in the next video, which will be the last one for this series. Thanks for watching.